I'm doing the internship at the Merck Sloan Kettering Cancer Center at New York City. So um, today I'll be um, I'll be talking I'll be talking about how currently we do biology and understanding the biology on a single cell level. Um, previously, previously Professor Professor Zhang talking about is a uh, RNA ex expression and uh, all the protein expressions. But uh, right now we'll do we now uh, I've been talking in this lecture. Uh, I hope you I hope I could introduce you. Um, currently the trend in biological analysis is to is to visualize or an, visualize and an understanding what's really going on in a single cell level. Okay. So. Um, as we all know that our like our me as our human, we actually uh, our, our body is consist by many different cells. For example, for our, example, our skin, we have fibroblasts, we have the adipocyte and epithelium. And uh, for for to keep our to keep ourselves healthy, we have lots of a very complicated immune system. It has um, uh, Megachondrocytes that deal with uh, the daily attack from the outer environment, and they also have dendritic cells that could communicate the information between different immune cells, and also the T cells, which will be specified in like uh, um, attacking some of the like uh, very very dangerous pathogens, like currently the coronavirus, and in our brain, in our brain. I mean, it also has lots of different cells, like for example, the neuron cells, which really conduct the information so, so that we can see and so that we can see and we can feel and we can talk. And then to help to help the neuron cell communicate better, we have lots of supporting cells like the epi, epidermal cells and the astrocyte cells. And, uh, and for example, the muscles, we also have different muscle cells for, um, for our for our organs to function smooth, to our organs to function properly, we have smooth cells that we have here. The smooth cells that specify sp specified in in our each of the organ, like like our kidney and our stomach. And uh, for us to like uh, make uh, to have a strength, we have a skeleton muscles like here in inside, uh, um, very close to our bones. And for our heart to function like properly, we have different car cardiac cardiac muscles. So, as you can see, the, the, these examples as it truly show that our body is actually very complicated and there with lots of different cells. So, how an understanding in those different cells will be like very important for us to keep healthy and for us to really understand the biology and mechanism inside our body. And uh, every so, and so uh, next is how the actually the genetic information, how the information flowed in a cell. For each of, uh, for each of, for each of the cells, we they have the same set of DNA, but but this even being even though their DNA are the same, they chose to express different RNAs, and then those RNAs would tr further translate to different proteins. Such that the different cell would have different functionalities. For example, here the skeleton muscle cells that would uh, these cells would express the RNAs, express this specific RNAs to express the muscle fiber. And uh, for example, the T cells, this those cells would specifically express the T cell antigen receptors, such that it will express some of the proteins like. Uh, in this form, and then this kind of receptors will capture the capture, you know, the outer 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 pathogens, and then it will further attack based on based on what they captured. And uh, so, the if the inform the if the genetic information of flow in the cell goes wrong, we would we would, we would encounter lots of diseases. For example, here. If we have a genetic variance, and uh, and then ex express it express something wrong in the neuron cells, so for some of the children and some people will have autism, and if we have the pro problematic muscle muscle cells, we have we'll have like uh, the muscular dis dystrophy, and then for 
for example, if we have the, you know, our, our, our adipocyte cells have problem to properly function itself, some of the people will have obesities. So really knowing our cells, um, knowing our cells, knowing each individual cells, how their functionalities will be quite essential for us to, to look into the, to understand the, understand the disease and it help us to cure more, you know, more diseases. Okay. And, uh, and another thing I want to talk about is that not only the genetics, not only the genetics information would make things difficult, but for like a, for very, for very stubborn um, diseases like a cancer, like a cancer here, it actually consists of by different cell type. For example, it's uh, for, for each of the cancer, for each of the cancer, it has cancer cells and these cancer cells will, will educate, will, here I use the word educate, that will educate the, um, you know, the vascular tree here. And then, so this, uh, this, vas this, this new vascular tree will, you know, uh, um, bring the nutrient for the cancer cells, such as the cancer cell will grow. And then those cancer cells are also very smart that they will, not only they will, they will educate the vascular tree here, and they will educate our, you know, our immune system, our T cells, such that they will make our T cells not very sensitive to the cancer cells, such that, such that all, after all the effect here, the cancer can like properly grow in the patient's body. So how to understand that there, those cancer cells and their interaction of the T cells and the B cell in our immune system and uh, their interaction with uh, like a fibroblast, fibroblast cell to generate this kind of this kind of new blood, blood line would be like very essential for us to truly, you know, to truly understand what's going on in cancer and to, to solve this disease for good. This is also this is also true for the leukemia cell, leukemia cancer. For example, this is our original um, blood, and then it has a different kind of it has red blood cells to um, carry the oxygen. It has a neutrophils in our new system um, to detect any any suspicious um, pathogens, and uh, also the monocytes and the platelets for different functionalities. But in the leukemia patients, they will in leukemia cells, which generates, which generate, you know, very irregularly and then cause lots of pain for the patients. And they also inter interact very actively with the red blood cells and the, the neutrophil cells. So um, the question is coming down to how do we, how do we really study the single cells? Usually, usually, our, this, usually the process is followed in this way. So for example, we have a tumor or, or in this case, we have a, new, uh, we have a neuron brain. It, have, it has different cells inside of this uh, organism and the tumor. And the first, our first step is to isolate, is to isolate each of the cells, makes them as an individual cells, and then We'll, for each of the cells, we'll sequencing, we'll get their, their RNA information. So using the regular sequencing uh, methods, and then uh, we'll get this kind of uh, ma uh, data matrix, such that for each of the row, for each of the row is a gene, for each of colon, this is a cell. So, and then for each of the, so, after we get this data matrix, we're first doing some like a quality control and or filtering to get to get the most of the best information and best and reliable information. Here we don't want you know some kind of biased information here, such as you interfere with our analysis of the of the the micro of the single cell of the single cell, and then after that we'll do a principal component analysis or any other sort of clustering analysis 
such that we could identify, okay, this is those those kind of cells actually very close with each other. So, and this kind of cells are very close to each other, but those two kind of cells they are very different. And the, so this this technique is really recently introduced in the field and started a revolution ever since. So this is uh, their whole pipeline. So from a complex complex tissue, we first isolated them, and then and then we for each of the individual cell, we isolate. Uh, we we you know we um makes we makes each of the individual cells in a in a droplet in a uncoated with the oil droplet, and then for each of the droplet, we'll give them a mark a bead here. This bead will capture the information in each of the cells, like here. So this bead, this bead captures the information of this cell, and this bead captures the information of this cell. And then we can sequence the information of the each bead, such that we'll get, we'll get the this um, this data matrix where it ref, where it reflected the cell and the gene expression information. So um, this overall, this technique is called a drop seek for single cell analysis. And here we can first visual, uh, first show, uh, first watch a five minutes video from the original author when they introduce this, um, this methods. Okay, so this is a five minutes video. Can everyone can everyone see this? I can see it, but I'm not hearing anything. Okay. Not hearing. Oh, I. Okay, sorry about that. How about now? Three years ago, we started working on it. Okay. Yes, now we can hear. Okay. And can you turn it up further? We can hear sound, but not words. It's unintelligible. Uh, so can I hear properly? Yeah, I can kind of hear it. Yeah, right, 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 right. Okay, okay, gotcha. Um, so, okay, uh, I think um, I think this issue will not be like a, a sort of instance. How about, how about just throwing the YouTube link into the chat box? And then we can watch it and everybody, you know, mute yourselves, but come back on in five after you watch the video. Would oh, that, that would work? Be... Or when you share screen, you can choose share sound as well. Oh. When, so unshare your screen and then share it again. And this time when you share it, check share sound. Thank you. Hi, I'm Steve McCarroll, yes. and I'm Evan McCosca, a postdoctoral fellow in Steve's lab. And I'm Oni Basu, a postdoc with Aviv Regev and the KCU at Broad, and with David Weitz at Harvard Seas. Three years ago, we started working on a new genomics technology to make single-cell gene expression profiling fast and straightforward. Complex tissues, like the brain, contain many different populations of functionally specialized cells. These cells use the same genome in different ways. There is so much to learn about the ways in which specific cell types assume unique cell shapes, accomplish feats of physiology, and respond to mutations and other stimuli. What is the range of cell types out there? We wanted to develop a method to systematically characterize brain cell diversity. If we could get enough gene expression profiles from single cells, we thought we st might start getting answers. When we started this project, gene expression analysis was really good at measuring gene levels in a single homogenized sample. 
So it's really like a fruit smoothie, which has all the different fruits commingled and homogenized, which is still pretty delicious. But what we really wanted was the fruit salad where you could taste every fruit one at a time. What this technique does is measure the genome-wide expression cell by cell. We started thinking about trying to make a system that would let us make thousands and thousands of single-cell RNA-seq libraries in parallel, inexpensive, easy experiments. We had been using droplets to study many things in molecular biology, such as the expression and copy number variation of individual genes. Droplets provide a way of scaling molecular reactions so that one can perform hundreds of thousands of them in a tiny microcentrifuge tube. What the microfluidic technology brings to the table is really the scalability. We can do around 10,000 to 20,000 cells at every go, and we can really look at complex systems now, like the brain or the immune system. The challenge with droplets is that they don't stay in one place, and they don't have stable addresses. We needed a way to put a DNA barcode onto the RNA from each cell, and to have that barcode be different than the barcode that was applied to the RNA of each other cell. Okay, here I, I think I need to make some explanation is that, as you can see, everyone, this, uh, this is a very tiny cells. And for each of the tiny cells with a tiny Evan came up with it, you will, you will like just individually lo located in one of the oil droplets. And then, and then what the, what we, well, then what we need to do is that we need to put something, put some identification here for each of the droplets, such that we'll, crisp, we'll correspond the information, we'll get the information of each of the individual cells. That's what they are talking about right now. So is this a nanoscale fluidic system wait, that's wait. running? Yes, yes, exactly. It's, okay. a, it's a nano fluid system that's running. Yes. Okay. This is a, this is a way could we could efficiently, you know, disting, distinguish lots of lots of cells at like yes. a, in in an hour. Okay. Doing this. We use beads to deliver DNA barcodes into droplets. We synthesize the oligos directly on the beads. To make the barcodes, we split the beads at random into groups add a different DNA base to each group, and then pool the beads again. Repeating this split and pool process 12 times, we produce 16 million different barcoded beads. Oni designed microfluidic devices that could deliver these beads and cells together into droplets. We call this technology Dropsy. But how can we really know if we're making single cell libraries? It could have been we were just making a lot of really tiny smoothies. So we came up with a simple test. Let's put human, and mouse cells together in our system. If each bead or cell barcode associates with a mixture of human and mouse transcripts, we've ended up with smoothies. But if each bead is captured transcript, so uh, here I think um, so. Here is that they want to conduct an experiment to truly to to truly say that for each of the cell for each of the you know that that bubble that bubble it actually capture an individual cell rather. Rather than they are within each of the bubbles, they have lots of different cells. So that's that's why they say we have a full smooth salad that we could have to have individual components, but what, rather than a, a smoothie that has a mixed components. So here they use it. We will see their experiment um, on the analysis of the mixed the mouse and the human cells here scripts from just one species, then we've preserved the information about individual cells. In the first series of experiments we did, many of the cell barcodes we identified had mixtures of human and mouse transcripts. We can So this this is their this is their figure is that for each of the dots the, we can for each of the dots we can understand is how what are the for the x axis represent how many of the you know RNAs are from the human, and how many of the RNAs are from the uh, from the mouse? So as you can see, some lots of dots actually, lots of lots of data dots actually contains human and the mouse uh, RNAs, such that it, it's it's not a very ideal sing, uh, single cell si situation to cap, cap sorry is to capture the individual cells, but it has lots of different cell type 
within one within one of the nano 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 droplets. Continued improving the design of our lysis buffer, we increased the stability of the droplets we made and adjusted the concentration of cells and beads used in our experiments. Eventually, we were able to achieve very high organism specificity for the great majority of the cell barcodes we sequenced, proving that our libraries came from single cells. Oh, sorry. So this is a perfect, perfect example to saying, okay, most of the cells, most of the droplets are either only contains the human RNA information or they only contain the mouse information. Of the cell barcodes we sequenced, proving that our libraries came from single cells. So we had DropSeq in hand, and now we could finally do what we wanted to do, which was to use it to, to study complex tissue like the nervous system. We chose to start with the mammalian retina because so much is known about the different cell types that exist in the retina, their functions, and there are molecular markers for many of them. We generated 44,808 single cell profiles for mouse retina. It took four days to do with DropSeq. Rahul Satija developed computational approaches for clustering these 45,000 single cell transcriptional profiles into clusters or groups. We had um, so we'll talk about later about this, how this clustering in our, uh, in our upcoming tutorial, how we actually identify and differentiate all these, cell, all these individual single cells to see their identity, to see their functionalities in a tutorial. But visually, visually is that basically we use uh, different clustering techniques that we could capture the information of the individual cell and then find their similar component, similar you know, similar cell types such that we can characterize. And then we visually or visually or mathematically to differentiate these cells from, you know, from these cells, from these cells, such that we can regard each of the group here as a, a you know, a, 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 with same identity, such that we can know their functionalities later on. Identified 39 transcriptionally distinct populations of cells in the retina. We found cell populations that didn't have markers before. And most reassuringly, we found a lot of types that we did know about. A single scientist can come in and make 10,000 single cell libraries every day. And the reagent costs are small on the order of six and a half cents per cell. There is so much exciting work to do. And we hope that scientists enjoy using DropSeq to do that work. So then can you identify the genes that are active that are transcribing in each of those cell, single cells from that same data? Yes, yes, exactly. Exactly. Oh. We, that's the way I, I, So um, to further answer that question, I think I need to show uh, this plot again. So for each of the for each of the cells. For each of the cell here, they, they we use this beam to capture the RNA information of the cell. So, for example, here is a different RNA, different RNA, and then for each of the beams, for each of the beams, now we can regard each of the beams that has the information of just one single cell, and then this RNAs, and we will further sequence these RNAs like the the same as the RNA sequencing, and we'll get the information. For example, we'll get the information. Okay, for example, we will get the information of this transcript and such that we know, okay, this is the information of a, of a, you know, for example, if it's a T cell, we think, no, this is the information of the T cell, um, T cell receptor protein RNA. And if this is a fibroblast, uh, sorry, if this is a muscle cells, okay, we know this, uh, and then we can say it from the transcript that this, this transcript says, okay, it's the RNA of the muscle, um, muscle, muscle protein fiber. So that's how, that's how we use this technique called drop sick to isolate and to sequence each of the cells and get their information, get their identity. Okay, so uh, next we'll carry out a tutorial about how this, how this data looks like and uh, how we actually analyze and doing differential expression and doing uh, doing this kind of clustering as you see if, say in this video and then how we identify the zero functionalities. Okay.
Um, any questions so far before going to your tutorial? I'll, I'll, I'll also flashing back, uh, flashing back the, the video to say if we missed anything. Would cells that are actively dividing be represented more frequently than cells that are not? Oh, that's a very so some good. Some of the cells are dividing really quickly and some are not at all. And it seems like there'd be a lot more RNA in the dividing ones. Oh, yes, that's a very, ex that's an excellent question. Um, for, for this kind of example, so if this, um, um, so actually, as you can see, for each of the cell, we actually capture their, at that moment, what this cell is doing. So if this cell currently is dividing by its in a G phase, and then we'll capture the RNA information of the cell in the G phase. And if cell currently is in the S phase, which means they're actively dividing and we'll capture their information, the RNA information that are involved in the S phase. Such that even though it's active, it is, it is this cell right now is actively dividing we will still capture the information. And more precisely, we will know what exactly what they are doing, whether they're in the G phase, whether in that they are in the S phase, S1 or S2 phase, whether they are just freshly just divided. So that's actually how the single cell RNA sequencing techniques can tell you based on their RNA information. Okay. So this is, uh, this is uh, you know, the, uh, 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 I'll just quickly flashing back the video to see whether we have more questions. So this is this is uh, the nano droplets that we are talking about. And these would be the ones that they're actually testing when they ran the mouse versus human experiment. Yes, yes. they were testing. So they worked with the fluidics to get the droplet size. Yeah. to the point where it differentiated into either a mouse cell or a human cell. Yes, yes. Okay. So yeah. as, as you can see, these cells, um, they actually, you know, they actually optimize their, prot their protocol to make sure, to make sure the droplets, the, you know, each of the, each of the cells actually will, will just go into one droplets instead of like two cells going to one droplets. And then, so this, and then the, the bead, the bead, so the bead is very small such that you cannot see it. But here, this, this, this pipeline, this line will, will inject the bead when the, when the, when they, when the droplet is generated. So this, how the droplet is generated. So, okay, so this is a bead information. And then this is their mouse and uh, their mouse and human experiments. Okay, and this is their uh, retina retina experiment. Actually, they actually this this result actually identify lots of lots of cell types that we didn't know before, which is um, still currently we don't we don't have that much of the information on why exactly all these cells actually are doing in the retina. But it's um it's a very first step that we can see okay there is exactly lots of different cell types in our routines. Okay, so let's uh, let's go to our tutorial. Um, unlike so, can you see my screen? Okay, so actually, uh, unlike uh, I'm I'm very. So we are still using R, this, this language to analyze the data, but unlike uh, Professor John, I personally prefer to use an uh, uh, environment called RStudio. So it has different panels. First of all, this is our script that we are going to use. And then this will be, this, this panel will show the environment of how, why information is actually, go, in, uh, why information is actually we are dealing with in our environment. And this this console to say okay some what, what script that we are actually car, uh, carried out and this and this panel will show the instant like the plot plot results so um, uh, if if somebody is uh, is uh, more familiar with this kind of environment the ID environment then you can check the R Studio 
So first, uh, let me first introduce the most famous packages that we use currently in analyzing the single cell RNA, single, the single cell RNA synthesis data is called SERAT. Uh, it's, uh, um, it, um, it's, and uh, this, this package is like a widely used and uh, actively, actively um, updating right now. So we'll, we'll most, um, so this tutorial is actually how we're actually using this threat, but it, it actually, and the threat, the threat method, sorry. Threat, now who citation? The threat algorithm actually contains lots of functionalities and they have very documented um, tutorials in the uh, Virgilet, for example. Today we're talking about how we analyze uh, the human blood, human blood single cell data, but uh, there are different, there are different tutorials for different functionalities. If your advisor is, um, is looking to specifically into different, you know, different data set like the, like the module, mo, module multi-modality data that could contain more, for example, integrate the single cell RNA synthesis data with other, uh, like single cell DNA synthesis data, for example, uh, just for example. Okay, so this is this is our website, Surat. You can just easily Google it here. I think that would be the first, uh, yeah, it will be the first one to pop out. So first of all, we will, for our, we will, first of all, we will, uh, introduce this kind, this method in our uh, environment using the library, and then first we, and then we'll, we'll read it, that our data, and then create the threat object. So as you can see, currently we have the, as you can see, the dimension we have around, 12, uh, around thirty thousand genes with. What he really looked like, he looks like this. For for each of this, each row is a gene, the gene name, and each column is a barcode. Each column is a barcode which which represent the individual individual cells. So if the cells express, for example, we identify one trans one transcript of the MRPL20 gene, MRPL20 gene, we identify this RNA will mark it as one. If we identify two RNA, we'll mark it as two, so on and so forth. So this is our matrix. And then next step. So since we have a giant matrix, as you can see, it's 30,000 uh, versus uh, 2,700. We'll first, we'll first do a quality control because some of the cells, some of the cells here, actually, um, even, though, even though this process Sorry, um, where is the uh, job? Even though this process is actually very clean, but it still it may damage the cell such that this, this information is no longer correct and we don't need it. So we first will identify how, what are the mitochondrial uh, cells expressed in the system? If the mitochondrial cell, if the mitochondrial genes are actually very uh, expressed a lot in the cell, which means probably the, the cell is also already dead. So, and then, and then we'll visualize, we'll visualize, okay, sorry. Uh, I think I'll just use this, you know. We'll visualize the, the distribution here. This is the percentage. Um, okay, so Rag, uh, Raghavi, Sorry, if I, I don't speak your name right, Raghavi uh, asked where can we download the data set. I'll provide the link later after the tutorial and uh, the, actually the tutorial codes. So, um, so for each, for, for, we, first we first identify the distribution of the, for each of the individual cell, how many RNA it actually detect, how, how many different RNA it actually detect and how many RNAs in, for each individual cell, and what's the percentage of the mitochondrial gene expression? And usually, we'll set a very clear cutoff to, you know, for example, we'll cut 
here in this line. And then for, for, the, for the cells that actually had a 20% of the mitochondrial expression, we'll consider it as dead, so we don't, we don't use them. So that's our second, our second step to cut the, to cut the um, to get you know, the quality um, better to filter out the bad cells. So currently we'll have, we filter out around 60, around 60 cells. So it leave us from 2,700 to 2,600. And then next, next, because different cells will express differently, we first will do a normalization of the data. After the normalization, um, because most of the gene expression actually does not, make, uh, does not help us to, most of the genes actually not helping us to find the, you know, the different cell types. So for, for that purpose, we'll first identify the genes that actually has a larger variance in the system such that we'll identify different cell types better. So this is, uh, this, is this step to find the variant genes. And uh, we'll, we'll actually plot them to show you. Okay. Okay, sorry, it, it takes a little bit to, to load the data and um, to get the visualization. Okay, so here it is. Okay, my computer currently is running slow, so sorry about that. Okay, so this is uh, our identity. So this is uh, the variance, which means how differently this gene expressed. And uh, this is the average expression, which means, okay, the mean value of their, of their expression across different cells. So we're focusing for the, so we'll only keep the top 2000, only keep top 2000 for our downstream analysis because it's top 2000 genes already can reflect lots of information in the whole system. So this is actually, uh, this is a data normalization process to remove some of the bias in the data. And the computer right now is running slow. Okay. So next, next is what we will do is to get this fancy, uh, this very fancy, the gene differential gene expression, sorry, the different uh, group of data, uh, sorry, the different, uh, different group of cells. First of all, we will find, we'll use uh, P, uh, PCA. Um, I think uh, currently maybe you are not familiar with by when you actually go to college, PCA will be a uh, very intuitive mass, uh, mass, uh, 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 mathematical, a method to actually generate the information, to generate the information for each of the cells. And then we'll use the clustering methods to get the clusters. Okay, it says, okay, we have two, three, uh, 2,638 cells, and the currently we could differentiate them into nine groups. And then we'll calculate will calculate their uh, coordinates and based on their, uh, based on the data itself. So, and yeah, it would take a little bit more time to get the, you know, the, the 2D visualization, the visualization of the data. So, okay. So that's how you. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's uh, the beauty of it. That's, you can see, you based on this information. Okay, sorry. Um, so this is not like a very general analysis, which takes a little bit more time than, uh, than yesterday. Okay, 
So as you can see, okay, we have the from all the their RNA expression, we transfer to each of the this this is the individual cell. For each of the individual cell, we get their, you know, we get we get how uh, we cluster, we cluster them and the, and then we use their this 2D coordinates, 2D, their 2D distance to reflect how differently, how different the cells are. And the based on and then based on this information, we further get a cluster of the each of the cells. So for example, this is a class. Okay, sorry, this is cluster three. And then and then currently we only have the cluster. We only know okay, these cells, these cells are very similar in since they are in the same cluster, but we don't know what these cells are, what they are doing right now. So next. Next is that to, to get this information, to explore, to get the identity of these cell groups, we'll first, we'll first find, okay, use this, use this pipeline to find, okay, what are those, sorry, um, to use this pipeline to find, okay, what are the different, what are the, in, in the sense of genes, what are the clusters are actually different with each other? So this this pipeline will cal uh, calculate the differentially expressed genes for each of the cluster, and then and then so it, it will calculate it individually for for each of the cluster. Okay, altogether we have nine clusters. Okay, we have eight clusters. Oh, we have nine clusters altogether. So we'll we'll look into okay, this pipe, this this line will tell you, okay. What are the what are the clusters? What are the clusters and their specific um their like most most express, most differentially expressed genes? For example, okay. We talking about cluster three, the CD seventy nine A. CD seventy nine A is uh, you know the specifically expressed gene for T cell. So we will hypothesize, okay, this cluster will be the T cells. We actually has lots of different ways to actually visualize this information. For example, well, it could do a uh, a uh, uh, Venn uh, Venn diagram, as you can see. For each of the, only the cluster three has cells, has cells express like the CD seventy nine A, the B cell B cell marker, and the cluster three also has an expression of MS four A one. Also is a B cell marker, so we could current, we could now very uh, confidently to say that okay, the cluster three. The cluster three is actually will be a T cell, will be a T cell group, so on and so forth. We could test. Um, we could have other. We could also visualize their gene, different gene expression from from the two D from the two D coordinates that we just seen before. So as you can see. This is a so this is a B cell uh, MS four A one is a B cell I don't know whether anybody can see it clearly. Okay, sorry, it's still loading. Okay, never mind. Um, we're still focusing on this uh, plot. So for other 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 groups did not express the B cell uh, gene marker CD seventy nine A and MS four A one, so we we can confidently believe that this uh this group this this group group three is actually a B cell cluster, and so on and so forth. We could identify. We could see. We could visualize. Or we could do a statistic test to say 
uh, to see other you know cell markers like CD8 for T cells and the CD33 for T cells and uh, and the CD8 uh, CD8 A1 for B, uh, for T cells also. Sorry. So mostly mostly we will just generate a heat map as we introduced before. Okay, so we wait a little bit for it to load. Or we can just. So the heat map will show each individual gene and then the cells that that gene is active in. Yes, it's um, yeah. so for the exact for the colon the heat. Okay, uh, sorry, uh, I probably need to buy a new computer after this. Okay, so so the heat map the heat map will tell you the heat map will tell you. Can't see you see we have altogether we have nine clusters. The heat heat map will tell you okay for each of the individual cluster. What, the, what are the genes they expressed? And compared to compared with other cells, other cell types, what are the genes actually very uniquely differently for this sort of cluster compared with other clusters? Which so is the yellow the highly expressed? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes, the yellow is a highly expressed, and the, the, the pink, uh, the purple is very low expressed. So, um, I don't know why I still cannot uh, get it so many things. Okay, but never mind, you get this idea. <laughs> um, okay, so so such that over uh, so on and so forth, based on their differentially expressed genes, will will mark, for example, the B the group three as B cell because they express the very strongly expressed the B cell markers like CD79A and CD79B and the, uh, uh, group zero will be a T cell because they strongly express CD3D and CD3D and so on, uh, the T cell markers. So on so forth, we could, we could, we could mark for each of the class, uh, for each of the, you know, cell group different, different identity based on, based on their different exp gene expression. Actually, their different gene expression is also the indication of their different functionalities. So because the group three actually expresses CD79A, which means they functions as a B cells. It's, uh, and the group zero for C, uh, CD3D, it also means they functions as T cells. So, and then overall we could, we could we could get a new, uh, new, uh, new idea. New, uh, we could. We, uh, overall, that's that's a that's a tutorial. Overall, from the gene expression data, we transfer and uh, normalize the gene expression. See, we from the gene expression data, we first load it and do a quality control and do a pre-processing of the expression data, such that we'll get a very, uh, to remove the bias. And then we'll conduct the differential gene expression for each of the group to identify the different functionalities of each of the cell groups. And then by exploring their different for different for exploring their different gene expression, we also get a new uh, to identify their identities of each of the cell cluster. Overall, we could we could we could find we could add, we identify from this data, from this PBM uh, C data, human blood, human blood cell data, we find we find lots of interesting information like the platelet, which uh, in the blood and the CD14, the CD14 monocytes and the FCGR3A and the genetic cells for the general purpose of our immune, uh, for general defense of our immune system. 
and we have B cell, we have NT cell, and CD8, T cell, naive CD4 T cell, and the memorial CD4 T cells for the you know, specific immune defense of our system. So such that that's, that's really wrapped up this tutorial is that um, from the, how the single cell, how it's, it's actually, it's a, a very, gen, currently the introduction is very general. It's how we started, how we, how we use this RNA, use this RNA information to truly give us the identity of the skin cells. And uh, we also currently, we have lots of uh, interesting things going on that to, for, to, for us to use this technique to profile the tumor microenvironment, to identify different tumor, tumor cells and to identify different, you know, different T cells in the tumor system versus different T cell in actually the normal, our normal system. Also the leukemia, also the brains. So this is a, so this kind of techniques truly revolutionized, um, actually not, not revolutionized, but help us more precisely understand what's really going on in, in, our, in our whole, you know, in our whole body. And what we can see right now is that we have different cell types and going on, going forward beyond this, we could use this into, uh, information for us to better understand the, the tumor, the diseases, the tumors, the autism, so on and so forth. This, uh, which will be a very big step for the biology to truly help, um, help to truly help for the biology, for scientists to truly develop uh, strategies or different medicines for such the diseases. So uh, I think I finished a little bit earlier uh, this uh, today. I hope you don't mind. So with, with the cancer cell, like the tumor, basically if you run that sample through the fluidic system, you can understand how many different cell types and what their gene activity in each of those cell types is, and then possibly develop a treatment like more personalized medicine treatment based on the person's unique tumor? Yes. Is that possible? Yes, yes, it's actually what's going on right now. Um, uh, it's actually what's going on right now, but uh, I don't think um, that, that would go in too far uh, as right. for introductory. But that's really, uh, as uh, Alisa, yeah, Alisa, right? As Alisa, yes. suggest, as Alisa suggested, that's really what's going on that way, really, uh, precisely seeing what's different, what different, especially we actually see different patients have different tumor cells. So it, it, we could develop a different personalized strategies for different patients, even though it's the same tumor, but you will have different results. So that's, um, that's uh, something, okay. So like two years ago, the, the, uh, the Nobel Prize uh, uh, awarded the immune, immunotherapy for doing, for activate the different T cells, uh, different T cells uh, to activate the, the T cells to attack the tumors. So how this, how we could, how we could better activate these T cells or these B cells or other cells to attack the humor, tumor. Our first, our very first step is to understand what are they. So to using the single cell RNA sequence data. Yeah, this, I could see, I mean, the number, like the video expressed the number of cells, you know, in the retina that we really did not even know were there in that. That's amazing to me, you know, to, to have a tool that can graphically analyze those samples and sort them into groups and, oh, in that quick a time, you said the computer was running slow. I thought it was like super fast for all the data that it was looking at. Yeah, they are actually optimizing. Currently, there are lots of uh, um, public. There are lots of companies actually optimizing this strategy for us to better, you know, get a, get a better rates and a better, uh, more precise, more precise, you know, information out of each of the single cells. What kind of computer are you using? How specialized is it? Is it like a database at the Sloan Kettering Center that's particularly fast and powerful? Oh, uh, currently I just use my single, uh, my personal computer, which is a Dell, uh, Dell computer. 
So it's a, uh, just a personal PC, personal laptop. So actually, um, actually, our <laughs> it's not it's not fast because yeah, that's the reason it's not too fast. But uh, that's also the case that everybody can can use their you know personal devices to get a, an understanding to analyze this kind of data. Um, so it's not too like you know too rewarding too. Uh, too expensive for everyone to actually analyzing the data, but but currently we actually has uh, so as you as as you can see currently our we only have two thousand we only have two thousand cells, but more recently uh, we have the capacity to truly sequencing uh, millions or billions of cells, which is, in that case it requires uh, the supercomputer. Uh, in that case, it requires supercomputer to to do the analysis. But but don't worry. Uh, at our Indiana University, we have very strong backup of, about the of the supercomputer. The big red three um, is actually better than the Memorial Sloan Kettering one. <laughs> so and it's uh, it's it's free for I Indiana Indiana students. So that's a very good thing. And uh, yeah, I actually actually using uh using the literally all my uh, analysis I using if if I if my PC cannot handle it I just use the Indiana University supercomputer system. It's very fast and convenient and uh, very strong. Actually, uh, I think if I don't remember wrong, it's like it's a uh, top fifty. It's it's in the top fifty or thirty three or thirty seven place in the world. The big the big red two. Uh, the big red three uh, supercomputer. Yes, yeah, thank you, Chang Lin. Yeah, cool. So, yeah, I think today it's, so this is a great introduction of single cell RNA sequencing and the process, uh, the experiment and the processing and the analysis. So I think the key idea is so definitely you will share the codes. And I think the key idea here is that. Uh, Kind of still so today kind of we have a maybe the largest coding amount kind of uh, compared yes. to the past kind of lectures, but uh, still this are all well make have well organized well organized functions. So if you do it, apply it to one data set, you will use it. You will apply it to the second one, you will still use this. So just to change several parameters like the input data, and and then the whole pipeline will keep the same. So and this can. Just if you're you, you're interested in like some single cell analysis or in the future you may need it. So I think this field kind of uh, this form a great kind of uh, at least some beginning resource resources for students to kind of to use. Yeah, mm -hmm. and still it's not like like I mentioned the last time. Still this time it's you're not for so far from research. If you know the mechanism, know for, know how to find the codes and introductions from the right place. So research is not that hard, and you can quickly get into it, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if no more questions, so I think probably we can finish the here today. Yeah, so, yes. thanks very much, Changlin, really appreciate it. Thank you this. so yeah. much for your time. And that thank was you. a fascinating talk in many, many ways. So thank you so much. Uh, I just, very educational all around, not only for the code, but also just for the biology behind it. So mm -hmm. very interesting, thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for, for this. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm, bye bye.